A group of scientists are preparing to send you on a journey. You will be the very first man to travel backwards in time wearing the brand new time travel suit they created. However, in order for the suit to work, it first needs to shrink you down to a microscopic level. Your mission is simply to travel back in time by clicking a button on your suit, then click it again to return to the present where the scientists can then bring you back to normal size. The scientists shrink you down and you begin the mission. You click the button and travel back in time. You wait a few seconds and then figure it's been long enough. You've been traveling back in time for a bit now. All around you, you can only see molecules moving around. Nothing macroscopic is visible. You click the button to reverse the process and go back to the present. But you notice that nothing seems to change. The molecules around you are still moving around just as they were before. You click the button again, but maybe it's broke perhaps. Still, nothing changes. You click it several more times and still nothing changes. All you see is the same moving molecules. Are you moving forwards or backwards? You can't even tell. You realize then, if you can't find your way back to the precise moment in the present, you might be stuck like this forever. However, right before you accept defeat, you remember something that you learned in physics class. You begin examining the speed of a certain group of molecules and how how the speed of the molecules increase and decrease after each button click. Eureka, you're going to make it out of here alive. What if I told you that it's not only unnecessary to use the notion of time to describe physics, but rather, you should forget it altogether. It plays no role at the fundamental level of physics. In fact, there are multiple notions that don't exactly have a role in fundamental equations of the universe. For instance, notions of up and down or hot and cold. However, a new problem is now created once we accept this idea. How can we save the notions that surround our experience as humans and describe them? For instance, up and down never enter Newton's equations, but you and I both know what they mean from our experience as human beings. Up and down are meaningful when you're near a planet or any other large enough mass with sufficient gravity. In this case, down indicates the direction towards the mass that exerts the gravitational pull, while up indicates the contrary. Well, the same concept applies to our notions of hot and cold. At the microscopic level, there is no such thing as hot and cold. However, when we put multiple microscopic constituents together, together and describe them as an average, then suddenly our notion of heat emerges. To put it simply, a hot body is a body where the average speed of a single constituent is increased. As you can see, we could comprehend the meaning of hot or down in certain situations such as dealing with average values of numerous molecules or the presence of a large enough mass, respectfully. With that said, something similar too must also apply to our notion of time. While time has no role to play at the fundamental level of physics, Nonetheless, it certainly plays a notable role in our lives as human beings, just as up and down or hot and cold do. What exactly does the passage of time even mean then? The answer to this question is actually relatively simple. The origin of time may just be similar to the concept of heat. It simply derives from averages of microscopic variables. All phenomena where we can notice the passage of time are also co-involved with temperature. We all know that time moves forwards, not backwards. In other words, there are irreversible phenomena. Mechanical phenomena, those that don't involve heat, are reversible. If we film these and run the film in reverse, we see something pretty realistic. For example, if you film a pendulum swinging, it looks realistic even if you reverse the film. On the other hand though, if you throw a ball and it hits the ground, then you reverse the film, the ball randomly rising from the ground doesn't seem so realistic. When the ball reaches the ground, you might wonder where all its energy goes. Well, it heats the ground. And it is at this precise moment where the heat is produced and thus the process is then irreversible. The past contrasts with the future. As Carlo Rivelli states in Reality is Not What It Seems, it is always heat and only heat that distinguishes the past from the future. Now, this concept can of course be applied to everything you notice in the world. A burning candle is transformed into smoke, but that smoke cannot be turned back into a candle. The candle clearly produces heat. A boiling cup of tea cools down and does not heat up, but rather it diffuses heat into the air. Even us humans, as we live and grow old, we are producing heat. Your car tires wear down over time as they produce heat through the friction. You ever touch your tires after driving a car for a while? You'll notice that they're pretty hot. Even the sun will eventually use up all of its combustible hydrogen and will eventually exhaust and die out. The sun is getting older and all the while, it too produces heat, clearly. 
You might not notice anything peculiar about the moon in your lifetime, but on a grander scale, it is evident that the moon is actually moving away from the earth over time. Why? It's because it raises the tides, and these tides heat the sea a little, exchanging energy with the moon. No matter the phenomenon that you examine, if it certifies the passage of time, it is through the production of heat that it does this. As Ravelli states, there is no preferred direction of time without heat. But heat is our way to name averages over many variables. The notion of thermal time reverses this observation. In other words, Rather than asking how time produces the dissipation of heat, instead it asks how heat produces time. We understand that the notion of heat comes from the fact that we observe averages thanks to Ludwig Boltzmann. Unfortunately, he ended up committing suicide, potentially because very few people at the time took his idea seriously. His tombstone now has his equation of entropy written on it. Now, we know that the notion of thermal time is that the notion of time also derives from the fact that we interact only with averages of many variables combined, just like the notion of heat. It all has to do with averages. As long as we have a complete description of a system and describe it by means of averages, we then can have a variable that functions like the time you see today. Along this time, heat dissipates. This is the time we experience in our everyday lives. Therefore, time is not a fundamental constituent of the world. However, it still appears that it does because the world is immense. We are small systems in the world interacting with other macroscopic objects. In your everyday life, you don't see single elementary particles like you did when you were traveling back in time in that magical spacesuit. No, you see balls, mountains, faces of our family, and everything else that makes our perception of the world so beautiful. This might be difficult to comprehend, and that's okay. It's because it's hard for us humans to imagine a world without time. We live in this time, we dwell in time, and we are nourished by it. We are an effect of this temporality, produced by average values of microscopic variables. To truly comprehend the world, sometimes it is required to go against the intuition. If this was not the case, comprehending this would be very simple, hence it is not. As Ravelli concludes, time is an effect of our overlooking the physical microstates of things. Time is information we don't have. Time is our ignorance. Anyway, I hope you guys found this intriguing. If so, feel free to share it with a friend, especially if they're drunk. I promise the look on their face is going to be priceless. Subscribe and enable post notifications. This way you could stay up to date with more thought-provoking content like this. And feel free to leave a like too if you enjoyed. I'll leave a link for Reality is Not What It Seems by Carla Ravelli in the description. For those of you interested in reading it, I also highly suggest The Order of Time also by him. I really enjoyed both of them. But with that said, have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay skeptical. Stay curious.